gotta say, changes are always happening in Thailand. Five years, six years ago, nobody was into camping. I started to see a lot of sporting goods places selling camping gear. I'm thinking, well, who's buying camping gear? Ties don't camp. Well, check this out. Ties don't camp, huh? Check this out. This is Purua National Park. There's some serious camping going on here. Look at this. Amazing. Ties don't camp, huh? This is a popular pastime now, so interesting how things change, isn't it? And they bring food and coolers and, and the whole nine yards. I mean, you see these people packing stuff up here. They're ready to do some partying. <laughs> see ya. Okay, it's a little after three o'clock and we decided we're going to go out and enjoy some of the great things that uh, Purua has at the National Park. And one of the things are some trails to some waterfalls and stuff. So we're going to go check this out now. When we got in last night it was late and it was probably pretty much filled with campers. When we woke up this morning there was nobody here. Well, it's picked up again and everybody's already setting up camp. And of course, what they're going to do is set up with their barbecues and everything because they bring their own food. It's a social event. It's a party. But we're going to go ahead and go down the, the path here. I don't know if you can see all the way down there. You can see there's a great view. I'm not sure if we'll be able to get to that great view down there. But another thing that's interesting that I found, and this happens every time. You can see where we parked our ripper mobile over here, away from everybody, in the middle of nowhere. This happens when we go to the beach, when we go all these different places. We find, try and find some place where there's nobody around. And out of all the places they could park or anything, they chose to park right next to us. So anyway, there you go. We have a neighbor now. So let's go uh, on our uh, hiking expedition, see what we can find. expedition is well underway and we've made it to our first waterfall or Hin Sam Chan waterfall so we're really excited about that but it's dry season the rains have stopped for a week <laughs> anyway there's no water there's a trickle if somebody left the water on in the faucet at the house it'd be as much as the waterfall is producing today Luckily, there's a few more to check out. They're a little bit further. This was the closest one, but we're on our way to check out more waterfalls. A study was done about Americans. One was how many actually had passports. The number was so low. It was like 10% of all Americans have passports because they don't ever leave the country. The other thing about Americans was when they go to parks, 90% of them never leave more than 100 yards beyond where their cars are parked. Now I understand why. <laughs> Well, we've come to the second waterfall now, and I'm standing in the middle of the waterfall. Check this out. As you can see, this one's dry too. It's just a trickle. So this has been a disappointing little trek today to the waterfalls. And there's actually a pool, if Nat shows the pool of water down beside her, there's a pool of water there that if the water was running, it might be a good place to like sit and cool off or something, but there's not enough water running through that. So it's probably not a good idea to be lounging around 
in stagnant pools of water. Just a thought. Anyway, I'm not sure if we're going to go venture to another waterfall or not because it appears that it's dry season and there's not much water. So maybe back to the Ripper Mobile for some R&R. We have some great little chaise lounge chairs and sit back and have a cocktail or something and relax and enjoy being a Ripper. น้ำท่วมสวยมากน้ำท่วมสวยมากอือหือยายกวาสวยกวาไหมน้ำท่วมเล็กๆเล็กๆยังไพเราะไพเราะอือหือไพเราะไพเราะ What does that mean Good sound Good place to meditate Om <laughs> How do you say peaceful in Thai language? Peaceful. Sabai jai, sabai sabai. Sabai sabai. Peaceful. Relaxing. Sam sabai. Sam sabai. Huh? Sam sabai. This is like our fountain at home. <laughs> this one makes more noise. I was thinking, wow, no Thai people come back to the waterfall. <laughs> now I know why. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, it was fun. Good morning, Purua. Good morning, Purua, or good morning from. You know one of the nice things about being on holiday? I have no idea what day it is. Sunday, My? Ruma? Sunday. On Sunday. Okay, so. Good morning on Sunday from Purua. <laughs> Do you know how many days we've been on a holiday? Mm. Today? Six days? Today is six days on our holiday. And we've been traveling a lot, driving around, seeing different things. We went to Purutabur. And Purua. Mm -hmm. Today we're going to go check out Loi. Not sure if we're going to stay in Loi overnight or not. Um, we'll see what they have there. It's been really nice and cool. In fact, this morning, taking a shower in this national park here, they have no hot water. It was like ice cubes. Mm -hmm. It's like ice water. Yeah, I water. Yeah, <laughs> Did you shower? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's, afternoon it's, the afternoon's better morning, when you get warm. Like yesterday we hiked around and we were hot. I said, now's a good time to shower. It's like you got to wash the important parts, you know, but getting fully drenched under the running water. It's like being in a mountain stream. It's cold. So uh, we're going to have a little breakfast. Yeah, the bathrooms were clean. In fact, yesterday when I, we we got out of, out of the van so late, <laughs> waited till it warmed up, they were actually cleaning them. So in the morning, everybody uses them. Then when they leave, the staff comes in and cleans them. And so I caught the, the cleaning crew in the bathrooms. It's interesting in, in, in Thailand, some up benzene, PTT, gas station, mm -hmm. anywhere, the mall, <laughs> the men push high by Hong Kong. Pooing tum tum Yeah, everywhere there's women working, even when you're doing your your thing. Yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, we're headed off to Lai uh, after a little breakfast, and Nat's got her obligatory uh, Isan breakfast here. Some some thum, which I'm not sure this early in the morning I can eat, but we'll see. <laughs> It takes my stomach a while to think about 
Ah, uh, Isan food. Very good. Very good. Wake up all. So we still on our plan have to go to um, Chiang Rai and Chiang Mai. But along the way, we're not sure where we're going to stop. So we'll see. Now I'm excited about continuing our trip and uh, seeing more things and enjoying this cool weather. Chop kwa. Tinai. Tapbe or purua. Well, no, Tapbe, we stay one night, not sure. Yeah, we only stayed a night and we stayed in a bungalow. Mm -hmm. Here we've been camping for a few days. Can't chop camping, man? The stars, chop yes, down there. And we sat out and watched some falling stars and uh, <laughs> took some morning. pictures. Yeah, I took some pictures. And so maybe I'll overlay a, a photo I took uh, last night of the stars. It was Suai mm -hmm. yeah. The problem with heat in Thailand, just like back in Florida, I remember I had my stuff in storage. So I had seven or eight years, I had my stuff in storage, and when I finally said, hey, this Thailand thing seems to be working out, I don't mm -hmm. think I'm going to be going back or need it, because I had kitchen stuff and office stuff in there, you know, all these things in case, tools in case I decided, or things didn't work out in Thailand, I could go back and start my life over again. I paid eight years. Bom hai sa thang sa ma pepi, sa ma hong leg. Hong Kong you. Anyway. Uh, by the time I actually took the stuff out, it was almost worthless. It was destroyed from the heat of Florida, heat and humidity. And the reason I brought that up is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Nat's starting to get warm. We actually sat down first inside, and the breeze blowing through was so cold, she was going, oh, it's now. I said, okay, go sit out in the sun for a while and see if you can sit out there because it's going to get warm. And it's starting to get warm. But anyway, the reason I brought that up about the stuff being destroyed... <clears throat> And you might want to think about this if you're going to leave your stuff in storage, depending on where you live. Last night, we have a, a couple of lawn chairs. One I bought new last year because the, the, the one broke. But I had this other one that I've had for a little while. And it was really nice, really comfortable and everything. Well, night before last, I sat down in it and the armrest just snapped in half. I tried gluing it yesterday. It didn't glue. Last night... We went to sit down again, and I could use it without that armrest. I could sit. I reclined the thing and, and went to lean back, and the thing just broke into pieces. I almost rolled. I almost rolled down the hill backwards. Anyway, so it's in the trash over here this morning. Maybe we'll look for a new chair. But if you're going to store your stuff, think about it. If it's worth it or not, I've always recommended divest yourself of everything before you come over putting in storage or whatever, it's going to be worthless. And all our members on our member site talk about how liberating it is to get rid of all their stuff and give it to people that need it or whatever. And then they come over and they're free. They have one bag or something. And I do have members that sh are shipping stuff over they just can't part with. But I'll tell you what, once you part with it, you're going to feel liberated if you do. I had stuff also, not only in a storage unit, I had stuff in a friend's house. And he said, oh, you can leave this stuff here. I don't even use this room. So I had some some containers there. And after a couple of years, you know, I told him, he says, well, why, do you, why, are you, why are you even saving this stuff? I said, well, stuff I can't live without. You know, memorabilia and stuff, you know. Well, after a couple of years, I got a message on my phone, uh, my voicemail, and he says, I got news for you, JC. You can live without this stuff because <laughs> you are. And he made a point, a great point. And he said, you can leave it here. It's not a problem. I don't use the room. But I just wanted to let you know, you can live without it because you are. So you can live without all your stuff, you know. So don't don't be emotionally attached to too much because that's where the pain comes from, wanting things to be other than it is or the fear of loss or loss itself. And once you can let go of stuff, and it's like you're, you're really free. So anyway, we're going to get back in the van. We're going to go off to check out Lei. If it's nice, maybe we'll stay there. If not, we'll probably be headed off to Chiang Rai. Mm -hmm. Do some more camping, maybe have some more camp. fun, relax, enjoy some more cool weather, hopefully. And uh, that's it for the morning. We're gonna wait. We're waiting for some more food, and then we're in the uh, Ripper Mobile, and we're out of here. See you later.
Hey, JC here. If you liked that video, make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel here. Also, we have another video up here you're going to be really interested in watching as well. And if you're looking for all the details of how to retire in Thailand in one place, plus a group of people to support you, check this out over here. Give it a click.